<coughs> I call this meeting of the Williamsburg James City County School Board to order. <coughs> May I please have a motion to uh, certify closed session? Madam Chair, I certify that to the best of each member's knowledge, the Williamsburg James City County School Board, while in closed session, discussed only public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements as stated in Virginia law, and that only such public matters as were identified in the motion convening the closed session were heard, discussed, or considered. Thank you. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Ms. Serza, will you call the roll, please? Mr. Kelly? Aye. Ms. Ownby? Aye. Mrs. Taylor? Aye. Mrs. Young? Aye. Ms. Hummel? Aye. Ms. Cook? Aye. All right, that brings us to the Pledge of Allegiance. I'd like to call up Jamestown sophomore Ashley Thomas, who is a bridge expert, to please come lead us in the pledge. If you want to come to this podium and speak into the mic, thank you. Thank you. Whenever you're ready. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Sirs, will you take attendance, please? Ms. Hummel. Here. Mr. Kelly. Here. Ms. Ownby. Here. Mrs. Taylor. Here. Mrs. Young. Here. Ms. Cook. Here. Dr. Beers is not present. I have a motion to approve the agenda, please. And I'm Chair, I move the approval of the agenda as presented. Thank you. Can I have a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Sosa, will you call the roll, please? Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Mrs. Young. Aye. Ms. Hummel. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Ownby. Aye. Ms. Cook. Aye. Okay, that brings us to announcements and superintendent's reports. Dr. Heron. Good evening, Madam Chair. Tonight I would like to use ti this time to make a few comments relating to Hurricane Florence. First and foremost, I'd like to express our heartfelt sympathy and concern for the families and school divisions in North Carolina. We know, we know that if Hurricane Florence had stayed on its original course, we could just as easily be experiencing the devastation that the people of North Carolina are now facing. As you know, WJCC staff and I spent most of the week closely monitoring weather forecasts as the massive storm made its way to the East Coast. Operations teams met with the city and county emergency planners frequently to discuss the potential impacts in our area and what we needed to do to keep families safe. As a result, we were ready for several of our buildings to be used as emergency shelters if needed. Principals, teachers, and staff from the Department of Technology moved equipment and prepared classrooms, and our transportation teams performed preventative maintenance on buses and evaluated routes. To say it was a busy and stressful week is probably an understatement. But our employees rose to the occasion and once again demonstrated that they are among the most dedicated and caring educators in the world. I also want to thank our parents, students, and families for their flexibility and understanding during the storm. As I've said before, the decision to close schools is never an easy one. We use the best information that we have at the time and ask ourselves, what's the right thing to do for our children? Student safety and the safety of our employees are always the most important factors we must consider. We also want to give families as much time as possible to prepare for the inclement weather and make alternate child arrangements if necessary. Understandably, with schools closed on Wednesday and reopened again on Thursday, families were left juggling, juggling schedules. I understand that, and I appreciate the fact that parents and staff did whatever it took to have students in class. In fact, on Thursday, nearly 92% of our students and approximately 95% of staff were at school where meaningful learning took place. Thank you for that. It's in situations like this where we see examples of remarkable resiliency from our students and staff. And in the coming days and weeks, we are sure to see examples of empathy, collaboration, and compassion as our schools and the larger community come together to help our neighbors to the south. Our thoughts and prayers will continue to be with the people of North Carolina throughout their recovery and cleanup efforts. And I know this community will do whatever we can to assist them. Madam Chair, that concludes my announcements for this evening. Thank you, Dr. Heron. Anyone else? Okay. That move, uh, move, uh, <laughs> next up is students and staff recognitions. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. We have several recognitions this evening. Two WJCC schools, Matoka Elementary and Jamestown High, and their PTA organisations were named 2018 through 20 National PTA Schools of Excellence. Schools receiving this distinction are known for the commit commitment to building strong family school partnerships. The recognition is awarded when a PTA and school have achieved high levels of family engagement, or when a PTA and school have made substantive, positive improvement in families' perceptions by the end of the school year. We will have representatives from Matoka and Jamestown come up separately to be recognised for their outstanding accomplishments. Matoka Principal Andy Jacobs and PTA pr President Ali Yonica, please join us up front to be recognised. Interim Principal Howard Townsend and PTSA President Laura Johnson, please join us at the front. Congratulations to both school communities. Uh, keep up the outstanding work. The Association of School Business of Officials International has yet again awarded WJCC Schools Finance Department a Certificate of Excellence in Financial Reporting for the fiscal year ended June 30th, 2017. This is the highest form of recognition in the area of governmental accounting and financial reporting. In addition, the Government Finance Association of the United States and Canada also recognized the Finance Department for their comprehensive annual financial report. Would Chief Financial Officer Monique Barnes please join us up front to accept these awards on behalf of the Finance Department. <clears throat> Congratulations again. <clears throat> Several WJCC school students participated in the American Contract Bridge National Completion this past summer, sorry, competition this summer in Atlanta, Georgia. Bridge clubs are offered in eight of our schools. Students learn the fundamentals of the game and have opportunities to compete locally to enhance their skills. The following students competed for first place wins against players from all over the world at the national competition. Joelle Bayless, Strats A and C. Joelle, please come to the front. Eden Gilbert, Strat B. <laughs> Hamilton, Strat B, three time winner. Kaden McKeown, Strat A. <laughs> K 
Kenneth Quinlan, Strat B, three-time winner. Evan Rabanowitz, Strats A and B. Devon Sherrod, Strat C. Kendall Smith, Strat A. And Ashley Thomas got a sportsmanship award, which included a $1,000 scholarship. <clears throat> At this point, I'd like to ask Mr. James Davis, community sponsor for the Bridge Clubs, please join the students for a group photograph. <clears throat> And as they all stand at the front, I'd like to say that uh, research links the game of bridge to increase math, logic, and reasoning skills. So we appreciate Mr. Davis's participation and support of our students and schools. Thank you very much, Mr. Davis. <laughs> Lots of mom's cameras real. Lots of mom's cameras. <laughs> for this evening. We will have more recognitions at the regular meeting in October. Thank you. It's scary. <laughs> I'm going to Google it. You can Google it on here. That brings us to citizens' comments. I believe we have two cards. Ms. Hummel, would you like to read the rules? Yes, let me get to that point. Let me see here. Okay. Um, this is the time when citizens who have submitted speaker cards are invited to address the board. Speakers are asked to come to the podium when their names are called, state their name for the record, and direct their comments to the chair of the board. Each speaker is allocated three minutes, and time cannot be yielded to another speaker. <coughs> Personnel matters are not discussed in open school board meetings, and we ask that you refrain from making any reference to specific individuals. The board is interested in hearing all comments fully and requests that citizens refrain from verbal outbursts, applause, or any other type of demonstration. Although the board does not respond to comments at this time, please know that we are listening and we appreciate your time. Thank you for adhering to these guidelines. Madam Chair, my directions are concluded. Thank you, Ms. Hummel. Ms. Ombi. Kim Hundley. Good evening. Um, been away so long, I forgot to enter a card. <laughs> so thank you for taking it. Um, on behalf of the Teachers Association, we're back. We're excited. Um, we're very excited about the new motto this year, which is um, Elevate Beyond Excellence. So um, when, when I first heard that, I thought of hot air balloons, something on my bucket list. But um, some people will think, you know, you're in a hot air balloon and you're going up there and you're, ele you know, you're elevating. Um, that could be pretty scary. You know, what happens if you don't get to where you're going? Or what happens if you look down and you don't like what you see? But the nice thing I like that our division is on a journey that if we look down, we can fix things that don't look right, change course, and just move on. So we were very excited about that. We were also excited about the PDs that we had, the teachers. I've heard nothing but positive things. Um, I know that uh, we had been meeting with Dr. Heron and we were concerned with some, we have some children that are dealing with trauma. And so one of the PDs I went to was um, 
done by the OT and PT staff, and they talked about giving kids fidgets. So I happened to find a fidget, which is a hot air balloon. So these are very good for de-escalating um, if you are nervous or if you need to take deep breaths, or I wouldn't encourage, they're soft, but I wouldn't encourage you bouncing them off anybody's head, but you can squeeze them and they will relieve tension. And so I thought, we all need fidgets. So I, I thought this went very well with the theme. Um, also, we are just very excited of the um, relationship we have always had with you all. We are all in it for children and you all are as well. And so I just like the viewing audience to know and the teachers out there watching that we do have open communication we appreciate you listening. We appreciate you um, working with us. And we look forward to um, the journey this year. And thank you for all you do. And I'll see you next month. Sandra Curran. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. First, speaking as a parent, I want to thank you all for your dedication to my children, to our children. I appreciate you all. I'm here tonight to speak to you about adding an auxiliary gym to Warhill High School, and I won't take up very much of your time at all. As I hope you all remember, I have already pleaded my case at your work session a few weeks ago. Tonight, I simply want to extend an invitation to this board. On the next rainy afternoon, please stop by our school and see for yourselves how our eight junior varsity and varsity teams, roughly 130 student athletes, cram into every nook and cranny of our building to try their best to get in an adequate practice as they prepare to compete and represent our district. We expect more than just an adequate effort from our student athletes, and I think we owe them more than inadequate facilities. Our school district's motto this year is elevate beyond excellence. Those are great words. And adding desperately needed gymnasium space at Warhill High School is a great way to put those words into action. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. There are no more speaker cards, so that brings us to the consent agenda, which includes 7.01 approval of minutes from August 21st, 2018 and September 4th, 2018. 7.02 financial report and monthly bills and payroll for August 2018. 7.03 personnel actions. 7.04 resolution R1618 National Disability History and Awareness, Awareness Month in October. And 7.05 resolution R1718 Bullying Prevention Month, October. Can I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I move that we approve the consent, consent agenda as presented. Thank you. Can I have a second? Any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Serza, will you call the roll, please? Mrs. Young. Aye. Dr. Beers. Aye, and here. <laughs> Ms. Hummel. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Ownby. Aye. Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Ms. Cook. Aye. All right, the consent agenda passes, and that brings us to our action item for the evening, which is 8.01 WJCC Schools Foundation Agreement. Ms. Hummel, can I have a motion, please? I move that we extend the current WJCC Foundation MOU until June 30th, 2019. Second. Moved and seconded. Um, with that, we can begin discussion. Ms. Hummel, I'd like to start with you, if you don't mind. Okay, so last, um, during our last uh, work session, we had an opportunity for the first time to kind of review in public some of the um, items that when our lawyer was reviewing our um, the MOU, the lawyer came up with a couple um, items that they recommended. Uh, we communicated those items to the um, WJCC Schools Foundation Board and they had uh, have not had an opportunity with the hurricane to even meet with their uh, executive committee to review these uh, proposed changes. So what we would like to do is give the WJCC Schools Foundation um, 
a healthy amount of time to thoroughly review the lawyer's recommendations and determine whether it's something that they agree with or not. And um, I don't know if either, if anyone else wants to say anything after that. Just that we have an excellent partnership with the WJCC Schools Foundation, and I think it would be very appropriate for the board to consider extending this agreement until we come to terms on a new agreement uh, because the partnership is very important for innovation grants in the schools and the work they've done with our schools has been very rewarding for our teachers. Comments? Now, the only question I have is uh, how much time do they need? Well, we're extending it until June 30th of 2019. Yeah, the motion is to extend it till June 30th. So nine months? Through the school year. Nine months through the school year. Okay. Um, I'm not sure it'll take nine months, but I think there's wisdom in actually having the, agree the MOU agreement align with our fiscal year. So, I, so as a matter of, we may come to uh, agreement prior to that, and I think that this item should be on future work sessions so that, we, so that we're not, um, so that we're talking about it between now and then, perhaps more than once. But um, at the end of the day, currently, it's, it's dated in September, which is kind of an odd time. I mean, it's the beginning of the school year, but it's not the beginning of our fiscal year or their fiscal year. So um, for that reason, it might make sense to do it executed. And this was the time frame, uh, Dr. Beers, that they, they felt comfortable with. Sorry. This was the time frame that, that the WJCC Foundation um, senior leadership felt comfortable with that extension. Nine months, mm -hmm. and why? Why were they more comfortable with that? They just wanted to have time to, you know, f for them, it's having to call together executive their executive committee, and then, um, and then talking about the points, the the revision change is a pretty major change that I think uh, none of us were quite aware of how, how the, uh, the proposed change would change the foundation from a independent 501c3 to a supporting 501c3. And that requires kind of a lot of uh, discussion back and forth amongst themselves to figure out is do they want to stay an independent or a supporting? Yeah, but that won't change whatever schedule they have now through the end of the year? Right. Right. Just everything stays the same. Okay. Okay. So I just, I yeah, just I think, want to... Madam Chair, yeah. I also think there's wisdom in, um, you know, as we go through the grant process, that we have just, you know, one set of rules through the through the academic year to get to get to June. I think that, that makes, a, makes a lot of sense to as you said, align with the uh, fiscal year of the school system. I also think it might be might be good to have kind of a committee of the board. I know Mrs. Hummel's on the foundation board as well, but another board member just to 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 who's might be a step removed from the foundation, just to you know answer any questions that the board at large might have, and to and to, you know have that discussion about some of those intricacies that we don't have to have in. Uh, as Other discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Serza, will you call the roll, please? Mr. Kelly? Aye. Ms. Zonby? Aye. Mrs. Taylor? Aye. Mrs. Young? Aye. Dr. Beers? Aye. Ms. Hummel? Aye. Ms. Cook? Aye. Motion passes. All right, that brings us to our information items. Um, the first is 9.01 WHRO presentation on educational services. Um, Dr. Beers currently serves as the chair of that board, um, about which we couldn't be prouder. So, Dr. Beers, if I could toss it to you uh, and Dr. Heron to introduce our guests, that would be great. Well, <laughs> certainly. <laughs> I'd like to introduce <laughs> Bert Schmidt, the uh, uh, president, executive director. President and CEO. Yeah, okay. The, the, um, at WHRO, um, and um, uh, of course, many of us have known uh, Bert for many, many years, and um, it's a 
and uh, he has really helped WHOR become a major asset for all our school districts, for all the opportunities that our teachers and students have. So, Bert, as always, I'm really happy to see you. Good to be here, Madam Chair, Dr. Heron, members of the board. Thank you for allowing me to speak. It does put a smile on my face every time I come here because so many of you are such good friends of the station. You also know that um, while our primary broadcast facility is in Norfolk, we have our second office here in town. Uh, Williamsburg is 3% of my viewership and listenership, but it's 13% of my members. So I'm especially pleased to be in a, such a supportive community as, as Williamsburg. So um, as you're one of the 19 school divisions that owns WHRO, I come to you every two years to give you a summary of what's gone on recently to keep you up to date. So you should each have in front of you this, this uh, information uh, in, uh, impact statement for the last school year. I'm going to just give some brief highlights, won't be too long, but I wanted to point out first on, on page one, the leadership that we work with on a regular basis. Um, Dr. Beers is your rep, as was mentioned, and he's not just your rep, he's also currently the chair of the WHRO ownership body. He gets to chair his first meeting in just a couple of weeks, so uh, looking forward to that. Um, of course, we've been working with Dr. Heron for quite a while now, and it's wonderful to work with you and, and the leadership you bring from, from uh WJCC. Uh, Brian Landers, who I just, there he is, um, last year was the vice chair and is now the chair of our technology advisory committee. In fact, he gets to chair his first meeting tomorrow. So he'll be there uh, bright and early over at the station as, as they advise us in all things technology. Uh, you can see uh, others uh, involved with us, Patricia Brown and Kristen, Carr, uh, Kristen Barr in particular. They've been on our regional virtual program working group. We've been working with the divisions on a Regional, regional virtual plan, so you've got people sitting at that table uh, every time they get together. So it's a amazing leadership here from the division. Moving on to page two, our educator resources and training. Uh, eMedia VA is an important tool used uh, by uh, children throughout the, the Commonwealth. We have a contract. We are in our eighth year, I believe it is, eighth year with uh, uh, the Department of Education to provide this uh, repository of digital learning objects. They can be video, audios, games, really anything digital that can be used in the classroom that, you know, when teachers are working with their students. Um, and everything is tied to the Virginia Standards of Learning. We have about 150,000 learning objects, objects from national organizations like the Smithsonian, National Archives, Library of Congress, but more importantly, in my opinion, from local organizations, nonprofits, and universities and all sorts of organizations throughout the Commonwealth who have great information that's available now at a click of a button to all of your, all of your students. We've also implemented a single sign-on solution here in the division. So when the teacher logs into their account, they're automatically logged into eMedia VA. So it makes it very easy for them to use the system. A couple other things we're doing in our, on this page, we have topic, special topic forums that we hold at the station regularly. We also have a, a professional development service called Teacher Line, where teachers can get professional credit, uh, uh, recertification and uh, uh, graduate credit uh, credits from JMU through uh, our Teacher Line service. And I should mention on page three, we are significantly in the workforce development space. We have a service called Skills Online. We offer over 4,000 courses in 19 different industry sectors. We also have an online GED program available. I know that's not directly related to you folks, but you should be aware that that exists as well. Page four, student services. A big piece of this is the online courses that we provide you. We have developed, think of us as the manufacturer, and we've given to you to use however you want, algebra, trig, astronomy, biology, chemistry, earth science, economics and personal finance, English 9, 10, 11, and 12, French, geometry, health and PE 9 and 10, math analysis, oceanography, physics, psychology, Virginia and U.S. history, Virginia and U.S. government, world geography, world history and geography to 1500 A.D., world history and geography 1500 A.D. to present, and then we have an online teaching methodology course. So we've made these courses we give them to you, and then you decide however you want to use them, whether it's all at home, whether it's a blended learning model, flipped classroom, they're for you to use however you so uh, see fit. And we recently converted them into the into Canvas. So in your LMS, it now they work throughout through, uh, through Canvas now. Other items, we've got had a lot of requests for video courses because the normal courses are going to be highly interactive. The video courses are really a t highly uh, uh, qualified teacher in front of a camera teaching a subject. So... If there's a hurricane day, 
or a sick day that you can go on. So right now we have for algebra, geometry, and earth science, earth science is the new one, every, literally every class of those classes. So if you, for whatever reason the student misses the day, they can go to eMedia VA. We've got a, 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 a PDF that links to every single class. And the student that missed the day can wa watch the lecture uh, through eMedia VA. It's a solution that many divisions are looking at for days that everybody's got to be out. So you don't, um, you know, when you have those snow days or hurricane days issues and you've got to figure out how to deal with those. Uh, virtual learning options, I think, are becoming kind of a trend lately, it seems. Um, virtual Virginia, of course, we operate that for the Commonwealth. Uh, last year, 108 students from WJCC registered. Uh, you can see from all the high schools. Um, next page are additional resources. Um, number of the, We love to celebrate smart kids. So we have a number of, of contests. We have our PBS Kids Writers Contest. For some reason last year, we kind of missed out here. So we'd love to get you folks back involved. This is for uh, students K through five. They illustrate and write a story, submit it. There's a judging. There's actually a TV show with the winners. It's a really fun event. The Spelling Bee, of course, you've been involved with for, right from the beginning. And the Great Computer Challenge has gone over 30 years now. And you can see on page six, you've got a number of winners uh, from Matthew Elementary School. Um, on page six, a number of ed educational video productions we've been working on. Uh, I was hoping to show uh, you uh, Dr. Heron, but that's not going to happen tonight. But uh, there's a new spot on WHRO. We call these Education Now spots where we ask the, the superintendent to talk about the best practice in the division. Uh, Dr. Heron is a regular now on WHRO uh, talking about the high school innovation program. So if you watch us at any regular occurrence, you will likely see her. Uh, on our air. Uh, we've been working uh, with, with the Department of Education on a bunch of open education resources. We've worked with the uh, Williamsburg Health Foundation, thank you, uh, Chairman Cook, uh, on a, a couple of items. One uh, are a series, and I was hoping to show you these as well, uh, called Green Beats. These are, uh, if you recall, uh, Schoolhouse Rock videos. These are, uh, our Health Beats, I'm sorry. We're, Green Beats is a series we're in now. Health Beats are health-related um, musical, cartoon, things that can be used in the morning morning announcements or uh, online uh, to help teach uh, health-related topics, um, things like cutting sugar out of your diet, getting a proper sleep. And we've been working with uh, Kira and the, and the foundation for that. So thank you very much for that. Um, moving on to page seven, uh, other, other educational work. We've been working with the VSBA. If you've gone to the Hot Topic um, forums, you've seen us there because we've been recording the Hot Topic forums and making those available to everybody. Um, I mentioned the foundation. Also, the 2019 commemoration. Uh, we're working with those folks closely on, a, on a, uh, our American Story Contest. Uh, we've been working quite a bit in the environmental space. Number 11 there, uh, Jane Batten, a local philanthropist that most of us probably know, provided us significant funding to do a whole array of, of environmental work. Uh, including green beets, which is what we're in production right now, following in the in the steps of, of health beet. Um, pages 9, 10, and 11 summarize our early learner services. These are really from pre-K, really up to three. I won't go through all of them, except on page 11, you'll see we started to do more here locally. I would encourage folks in that space. Again, it doesn't cost you any more. And we could, we have a lot of uh, pre-K services, really up to uh, levels three. And we've got, you can see the list of things we, we provide. We have a STEM van, literacy van. We have library corners, reading camps, coding camps, a whole litany, three pages. So if the folks who are involved in that space can be aware of these services, that'll be great. And as board members, you care about the bottom line, page 12, the ROI. You invest $2 per student each year into WHRO, and last year, you receive savings and value of $695,000. That's a 24 to 1 ROI. I hope you like that investment. I hope your stocks are doing that well. I'm happy to take any questions. Dr. Beers, do you have anything to add before I go to the rest of the board? Robert, would you please um, introduce your sidekick who's here? I'm sorry. I, it's the first one of the year I've done this. <laughs> Brian Callahan, my chief education officer who really knows if you ask me anything hard, that's why he's here, because he really knows and really makes it all really happen. Yeah, because you know, um, he, he, Brian is so, uh, uh, so, so responsible for so many of the outreach um, activities in education, and uh, um, I, I just think, um, you, you know, when you when you go over, 
I haven't, I haven't read it in, in its entirety now, but uh, not only are we saving dollars, uh, we're getting access to programs and uh, facilities that we wouldn't otherwise be able to. So I, I, um, uh, it's been a long and profitable <laughs> partnership, and I know it's going to continue on. And uh, uh, as one of the owners of WHRO, I think WJCC is, uh, um, uh, is really fortunate. A number of you know this, but we try to make the, uh, the meetings when, when Dr. Beers and Dr. Heron uh, come very uh, worthwhile. Last year we had the First Lady come. A couple of weeks we're having State Superintendent Jim Lane coming to the meeting. So we try to make sure it's, you're getting important information that you might not otherwise get uh, and having them in front of all of you. So we want to bring the value uh, to the division uh, for your $2 per student. Um, I just uh, wanted to know if you've received I an increasing demand for more technical classes, in particular coding classes. That um, My quick answer is yes, because it's unbelievable. I've sat in on these classes. If you've never done it before, it's unbelievable, because I've missed the coding thing, and I'm too old for that, I guess. But you, you watch. We teach teachers, and they're teaching children coding. And we've had, Brian can jump in on this, but we've had a number of classes, and we've had way more attendance than we ever expected. Hey, Brian, can you come to speak in the mic? Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we, we, actually, we actually, we would love to come out and do that, and uh, we look for funding to run them, but they're week-long summer coding camps for children, and it's funny because coding isn't just about coding. It's about a way of thinking, okay. and uh, so we start at a very young age. These are for elementary school, and they utilize uh, what's called Scratch Junior, a very common coding language, and they have all the PBS characters. So the children just love it because they come in, they learn coding, and they're using the characters from our shows as part of what they're coding and making them do various things. So it's, yeah, it's a really good thing to do, and we're happy to come out and do that. We do lots of those. So in, a, in addition to these coding camps, do you also have um, online courses that our high school seniors could take to prep them? We don't, but that's something that would be great to put into the mix because with the new requirements, um, that's something that would be a, a very good thing. But it takes us about a year or so, and the requirements are brand new. It takes about a year or so to develop one of these courses, like writing a textbook. So um, that would be very good, and we'll take that into consideration okay. and add Thank that you. to the mix. Thanks. Yep. I have to admit, when I took the coding class with all those kids, I had to cheat off of the <laughs> six-year-old next to me because they, they were flying them. <clears throat> Um, I just want to thank you for coming this evening, and thank you for your work in our community. I'm most impressed with your high quality, but also your responsiveness to the community and its needs. Um, you seem to always be right where um, where the community is, and whether it's coding or the, working on the 2000, uh, the 1619 commemoration, or um, you know, healthy. Uh, Cartoons, you're just very responsive, so we appreciate you. And I should mention, maybe the next time I'm here, I'm going to show some 3D video that we're working on with your folks, so uh, right. on middle school choices. So, uh, and so and thanks, thank uh, and I want to thank Dr. Beers again to for your service to WHRO. Your leadership is very much appreciated by this board. So, anyway, do you have any questions for us? Okay, thank, thank you, you very for, much. Thank you thanks. for being here. <clears throat> That brings us to 9.02, the 2018-2023 <clears throat> Strategic Plan Goals and Strategies Monitoring Timeline and Communications Plan. Dr. Heron. Thank you, Madam Chair. It's our pleasure this evening to provide an introduction, an overview of the Strategic Plan Goals and Strategies Monitoring Timeline and Communications Plan. To start the conversation this evening, Dr. Murphy will take us through the goals, some of the strategies and the focus areas for year one and give us a sense of how that's going to be implemented and monitored. And then Ms. Cox will take over and talk about how we're going to communicate this plan to the community. Thank you, Dr. Murphy. All right, good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, and Dr. Heron. Uh, it is truly a pleasure to be here tonight to present the work of the division and community-wide collaboration to chart the course for the Williamsburg, James City County schools for the next five years. The six goals and multiple strategies we present to you this evening are the framework for our improvement and have been developed after six months of extensive study and evaluation of our practices, as well as meaningful conversations with our stakeholders. 
Our work has been guided by the vision and mission statement and the core values of our school division. And here again are the strategic themes that were addressed in our plan. The themes are not presented to reflect priority order, but are considered part of an in interconnected framework. Work associated with an individual theme may also support and enhance other theme areas. I would like to point out that this strategic plan is a living document and constantly evolving as we anticipate the, and respond to the needs of students. To enact each strategy uh, outlined tonight, we have assigned a gold champion from the superintendent's leadership team. The champions, in turn, form action teams responsible for implementation of each strategy. These action teams meet regularly and have a timeline for deliverables that are reported back to the gold champions. These action teams will continue the collaborative nature of this process by working across teams and reaching out to staff and stakeholders for feedback throughout this plan's implementation. This project process, progress will be measured and reported out by both division level and department level key performance indicators or KPIs. Our final KPI workshop will be held on September 28th with consul consultation by Valbrun Consultants. Here we'll refine our KPIs and our internal mechanism for progress monitoring. Each month, Gold Champions will, be, will internally report their progress at our senior leadership team meetings. Our monitoring timeline actually begins with this presentation. As stated, our action teams have already begun work on the year one strategies that will be presented here tonight, as well as working to collect baseline data to monitor their progress. We will have a mid-year update to the board in December that will present progress we have made on our year one strategies. And in June, we will present a year-end summary detailing progress from our action teams and an overall status for our attainment of our six goals. The theme area of academic achievement and college and career readiness, this is our first goal. The strategy, for strategy one, we will develop and implement common formative assessments as a process to better inform instruction. One of the intended outcomes of this deliberate method will be to guide teachers' facilitation of small group learning. For strategy two, this action plan will use growth assessments to measure student progress. Additionally, individual student growth assessment will, be, will accommodate or facilitate student goal setting. In fact, one of the tactics of this strategy is for every K-12 student to set an academic goal and to select a learning strategy to be employed in order to help meet the student's goals. For strategy three, our work is to ensure that every student is reading on or above grade level by the end of grade three. We will implement the instructional components of the elementary literacy model to deliver effective and developmentally appropriate literacy instruction. In the area of educational equity, our next goal. Our first equity strategy will focus on implementation of the MTSS framework in all of our schools. Currently, we have schools in differing stages of implementation and only three schools at full implementation. At this time, our program's primary focus is on student behavior and aims to address the issue of disproportionality in discipline and out-of-school suspensions. We also have formed an action team to address the disproportionate representation of our subgroups in our GT, honors, and AP courses. And lastly, for year one, we will work to increase equitable access to bright beginnings for all eligible students. Under communication and engagement, this is our goal. Strategies to support this goal include the creation of a comprehensive internal and external communications plan. The internal plan the, excuse me, the external plan will be very forward facing for our parents and community members, while the internal plan will focus heavily on creating channels for open two way communication with employees. This action team will also look at what other tools are available to share important information and to help tell the stories of the wonderful things that are happening in our schools. 
In order to foster a welcoming culture of inclusiveness and engagement, this team will develop strategies to ensure that all of our stakeholders are heard and valued. Additionally, the communication and engagement team will work with the communication advisory committee made up of parents, staff, and community representatives of diverse backgrounds to explore and evaluate the needs of previous and preferences of various populations. Instead of guessing how to best engage families, we will ask them their preferences and develop action plans and tactics to move that work forward. Under safety and security. Our first strategy to form is to form a safety and security action team to more effectively utilize our resources to increase the amount of time spent providing direct counseling services to students and decreasing the number of students receiving homebound services for social or emotional reasons. For strategy two, the plan will be to expand the work of the safety and security committee. This team will also develop protocols to standardize our communication in the area, as well as tracking the number of school communications to parents regarding safety matters. And for strategy three, we'll provide training in the area of safety and security for our employees appropriate for their roles and responsibilities to provide awareness, consistency, and continuity across the division. Under human capital and positive culture, our goal five. Here we plan to strengthen recruitment to attract highly qualified and diverse applicant pools by increasing the number of job fairs attended and implementing a process for early offers for instructional positions. This team also improve and expand our own, our Grow Your Own Teacher event. Under strategy two, this action team will focus on developing a five-year total compensation plan where WJCC leads the region in employee salaries and benefits. This plan will include conducting annual employee total compensation analysis as well. And organizational efficiency and effectiveness. Our first strategy is to implement a strategic management system in the first year that will position us to properly monitor various strategies and the resulting key performance indicators throughout the life of the plan. The strategy two action team will focus on a consistent change management process to be used with all major changes within the organization. <clears throat> and strategy three will build on the success of data processes already seen in schools with their data teams and provide a constant, a consistent data driven decision process across all WJCC schools. Strategy four will allow us to build on earlier success with process management. This action team will work to identify two to three business processes to improve every year. And lastly, the finance action team will work to align our budget to the strategic plan to ensure that we are focusing our funding where it is most needed. <coughs> Next, I'll be followed by Ms. Eileen Cox to detail how our plan will be communicated. Good evening. It's my pleasure to share with you tonight uh, a number of ways that we will introduce our strategic plan to our community and stakeholders. In fact, this presentation aligns with goal three and our commitment to open and effective communication. For our strategic plan to be successful, we need our teachers, parents, students, and community members to understand its purpose and also their role in advancing the work to attain our goals. To, uh, to do that, there needs to be an identity and a brand for them to embrace to help build that understanding. So as we met and thought long and hard about what the purpose of the plan was and where we stand now, um, it actually was quite easy because we considered that WJCC schools are already um, excellent schools and as a division very high performing. 
And then we noted that the new strategic plan and its goals will just move us higher and advance our work. So really, the theme, Elevate Beyond Excellence, was in front of us all the time. It just embraced those components of where we are and where we want to be. So our task really was to just visually represent that for our community and help them understand the goals and, more importantly, the role that we all have in, um, in supporting students and achieving these goals. So the plan itself is the what, um, and the why is spelled out in the goals and in the strategies and actions you find the who and the how. So as any reporter would tell you, including Amelia, um, those are really the components of a good story. So the question now is how do we tell our story to the community? So tonight we're going to talk about some of the strategies that we will have and oh, I'm going to move on here. Uh, some of the strategies that we will use in telling the story of elevating the division beyond excellence. For example, we'll use our website and social media channels, printed materials and signage, an ongoing video series, and then email and direct communication. Um, for email and direct communication, we want to be very intentional about that. We want to have um, a common message for both our parents and our students and our staff so that we're all using the same language because that in and of itself helps build understanding. So the communication efforts will be ongoing and growing as the plan evolves and continues to develop. But of course, we have to start somewhere. So let's talk about the very beginning. In the beginning, the communication will center heavily on that awareness building. We've created the brochure that you have at your seat there, along with the um, pocket card that you received at convocation. These materials lay out in a very easy to read and understand um, manner the strategic goals. The brochure also includes the strategies and perf uh, potential performance measures as well. Copies of the brochure and the card will be provided to each school. Uh, so they can be kept in the main office. That way they can be shared with new partners, new volunteers, or families that are just moving to uh, Williamsburg and James City County. Existing staff and um, current families will receive the brochure through an email that will go out tomorrow evening uh, that will also include our first video from the video series. Uh, in addition, we're going to develop posters that can be uh, displayed prominently in each school in the foyer. So as guests come in, they can, again, build that familiarity. Uh, as you know, we have a strategic plan page on our website. You can see it there on the screen and also on the handout that, that you received at your seat. This page is going to look a bit different tomorrow. Uh, it's going to include the Elevate Beyond Excellence brand. It will also include the brochure, the pocket card, uh, the video links, and then um, throughout the year, it will also include data, evidence, and a photo gallery uh, that shows how the plan is coming to life in classrooms and through professional development. Another big part of our communications outreach is going to be a multi-part video series. Uh, as you can see on the screen and also on your handouts, the videos will be created to introduce the goals and strategies. It will show, the next segment will show parents how it's coming to life in the classroom. There will be a video um, that uh, informs the public about how we are measuring progress and what progress we are making, and then also what's ahead, what are the next steps in implementation of the plan. I want to caution it's not you're not going to just see four videos. These are just the four theme areas for the video series. So there'll be multiple videos for each section. Uh, the first video in the series kind of offers that 1,000 or 10,000 foot view of the plan. Uh, some of you saw the video at convocation, uh, but for those of you who have not seen it, uh, and for our public here tonight, we're going to take a quick look at the video that will be posted tomorrow. What does it take to lift up every student, to prepare them for success in the classroom and beyond? In WJCC schools, we believe it requires the most talented teachers and staff working together with a laser-like focus on what's most important. With a new strategic plan as our guide, we will take teaching and learning to a whole new level. Academic achievement and college and career readiness for all students. Educational equity, communication and engagement, safety and security, human capital and positive culture supported by organizational efficiency and effectiveness. 
That is the work of WJCC schools. We all have a vital role. We all are champions for our students. Now is the time to elevate beyond excellence. So I love that video uh, for a number of reasons. One, it just has a lot of energy. It reminds me of a movie trailer of what's to come. And that's really what we want uh, our parents, when they see that, to say what's coming next and how can I be involved. So we're excited to share that with our larger community, as I said, beginning tomorrow. It will be on our website. We'll tweet out links and post on Facebook and also share in that email coming uh, to parents tomorrow. That includes the brochure. Um, so from now on, you're going to see this logo everywhere you look, Elevate Beyond Excellence. Uh, it's going to have connections. The theme will have connections in all of our news releases and in our announcements and in our presentations. Uh, you'll have brochures and cards to pass out when you're speaking with constituents and when you're talking with community members. And already we know that it's working because both of our speakers this evening referenced Elevate Beyond Excellence, so we're on the right path. Um, Elevate Beyond Excellence is really going to be our mantra as well as our roadmap for our work for the next five years. Um, but as I said, this is just the beginning and there's still much more to come as we elevate beyond excellence. So Dr. Murphy and I are both happy to answer any questions that you may have at this time. I don't have any questions for Dr. Murphy or Ms. Cox. Kelly? Oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Beers. I know. I, um, I was looking at, um, I, I'm very impressed with how this has come together, how many different groups are involved um, in the creation of, of our strategic plan. Um, but I was I was um, I was looking at goal five. Um, recruit high quality staff, retain your simpler workforce, by creating an environment where transparency and trust are the norm. But I haven't seen any strategies to focus on that. I've seen strategies that strengthen recruitment, that de develop highly competitive compensation plans. Um, but I, I actually think that's a real critical part of that goal, and I'm, I'm just curious. Um, and it doesn't mean you have to have them right now, but I'm just curious what, because um, there, you know, things have been a little uneven across the division, um, and so um, I'm, I'm really interested in seeing what kinds of strategies or what kinds of things we're going to do to sort of. Um, see the transparency and, and it helps create the trust that we that we know is so important, at the, at, especially at the building level. Well, as I said in the outset, we do have gold champions. We have uh, Mr. Baker here who is actually our, of course, human capital gold champion. But I would just say that, uh, as I also said earlier, it's a living document. So the first year strategies are outlined here. There are some other strategies on the program itself, but we will develop um, as they go along because basically we're getting baseline input. We're still taking input, and so we will develop the plan as it goes along. I just think that that's so important in the sense that many of the other things, many of their goals are going to be more easily achieved if – um, we really reinforce that and, and strengthen that. So, yeah. Dr. So Beers, if I may jump in as well, <clears throat> it is one of the, the themes that emerged in collecting the data from internal and external customers. And this piece runs across the whole plan. Sure. And actually, a lot of it will be, will be very important in, in our communication because transparency and communication is one of those key things where trust is developed. And as you realize from even our conversation tonight, one of the key things we're going to do is to keep staff informed and the community involved and informed of everything we do. So this, uh, that theme will run across, not just through one strategy, but through everything we do, mainly in the area of valuing staff for the work that they do and communication across the system. Thanks. Kelly? I, just, I don't really have a question. I just want to thank all of you for, uh, and, and I look at the two of you, but I know that there's much more behind you uh, for the good work that you're putting in here. Um, I think you know, developing the goals and strategies is good, but also incorporating that communications plan is also pretty, is also very key to getting that out to the, to, as you say, 
other people who have responsibilities, the teachers and the staff and the students and the community, you know, all have to buy in to, to, to elevate our school system further. So I just want to thank you all, and, and, and I, I do appreciate this, the, uh, the two in working together, the plan as well as the communications plan. I think that's important. Ms. Young? Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Thank you. Um, I think one of our goals on, for the school board was definitely to improve communication, and I can see that happening. Um, I'm, I'm happy for the focus on continued literacy uh, instruction because, to me, if a kid is after third grade, if they can't read, they're in trouble. So um, I, I, you talked about laser-like focus. That's one thing I'm really hopeful that that will be highly focused on because every kid should be reading. And uh, one of the things I, I want to compliment Ms. Huntley on tonight, uh, that it's so important that our staff feels like we're transparent and that we value, that we value their opinions and their ideas. And um, because one of the things that has concerned us in times past is people being afraid to step forward with concerns. I hope that that is that, that uh, under the leadership of Dr. Heron, that that is somewhat changed, and I hope that will continue to change because we do value our, our faculties and um, our um, employees on all levels, and we do want them to feel like that they can come forward with concerns and issues. And, and please take advantage of Ms. Huntley. She's excellent. Absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah. well, I just uh, don't have any questions. I just wanted to thank you for your presentation tonight, and the rollout of the comm plan looks great. So thank you both. I too don't have any questions, but just wanted to share this is such an exciting time because strategic planning is so important to have that roadmap so the division collectively knows where they're going and we were so ready for a new roadmap because our old strategic plan, we had met those goals and, and actually in a, in a five year plan and, and had an extension of, of, of last year. So this is exciting to me and I can't wait to, to, to see the progress that we've made at the mid-year report. So thank you for all that you've done. I'd like to echo everyone's thanks to, to everyone who was involved. I just, um, I, I understand that this is year one and that it's a living document, um, but I'd like to follow up a little bit on what Dr. Beer said, but on a, on a different goal. Just when I look at goal two, the, the equity, educational equity goal, um, I, I think strategy two, the equitable ac access to gifted, talented honors and AP is, is laudable, and I think that absolutely should be there, but I don't want to lose sight of sort of access to just grade level, on grade level access to um, achievement um, and access to uh, at the elementary and middle school level and then at the high school level to classes regardless of what your you know economic um, situation is or what school you go to. So I just wanna, um, I don't, I, I think the higher level stuff is important but I don't wanna lose access, at, at, uh, I'm sorry, lose track of everything else too. Understood, yes ma'am. So, um, because that impacts more kids frankly. Um, so, but uh, I think this is wonderful. Th Dr. Murphy and Ms. Cox, for, thank you for coming to present. Dr. Heron, did you? Oh, just that I'm really excited to be at this stage as well. And a lot of work has gone uh, by with all of the people sitting in front of you tonight on senior leadership and, and their departments working many hours to get to this point. And I want to thank them publicly for all they've put into making this possible. And now the journey begins, and we look forward to moving the division beyond excellence. No one can top that, so we're going to move on to board matters, if that's okay. Um, Ms. Taylor, do you have anything tonight? I don't have anything this evening. Dr. Beers, do you have anything for board matters? Do you have any final comments? Yeah, just a, just a couple. One, one thing that really struck me tonight um, is, uh, and, and it's really exciting to see, is all the dovetailing that's taking place. Um, we, you know, we've got a we've got a new dynamic strategic plan. We heard from all the opportunities um, that WHRO um, helps to create for us, which that which we certainly can uh, benefit from. And then the third thing um, is our foundation. We have a foundation that um, is going to support the ongoing work of. Uh, of the school district, and I just think um, um, it's, it's uh, um, fortuitous that all three of these things came together in the same meeting, and, and uh, um, I think that's really exciting, and, 
and I look forward to seeing how that works together. Kelly? Yeah, uh, the only thing I really want to talk about was uh, uh, Dr. Heron mentioned earlier about the decision process for the hurricane and closing the schools. And, and everywhere I went, I got a lot of uh, compliments for actually having schools open on Thursday. Um, you know, each day is each day we decide, Dr. Heron and her staff decide whether they're opening schools. So each day was different. Wednesday closed, Thursday open, and uh, and Friday closed. And I know. The, I just want to thank Dr. Heron and her staff for the thought process and the and the and the reflective thinking in in making those decisions. We were fortunate enough that we've only missed two days, where other school systems have missed four days, and the first snowflake hasn't hit the ground yet. So uh, um, that could come to come to haunt a lot of school divisions. So I just want to thank Dr. Heron and her staff for for putting those, that good thought into the schools last week. Thank you, Mrs. Young. Um, it's been many years since um, this, this, this is leading somewhere, but my, my father, uh, uh, when he was 55 years old, got his GED. I was telling him to Apollo tonight. And today, uh, September 18th, is when GED uh, became available again here in uh, WJCC. And I just want to just tell those people who are even slightly thinking about changing the path that their lives are on, that GED classes are available now. They can call the, the school division. They're being held at Thomas Nelson, Tuesdays and Thursdays, from 9 o'clock to 12 o'clock. And then again, there's another opportunity. If you can't make it during the day, you can go at night from 5.30 to 8.30. There's excellent uh, staff and a great opportunity. There's also Literacy for Life if you are uh, having difficulty with some, some skills, reading, math, um, whatever, so that you can get your GED. Because I can tell you, I don't think I never saw a prouder man than when my dad told me he got it. Um, you can, when you call JC, WJCC, push button three, <laughs> it will take you, and then you find that it, where it tells you to go to the Office of Curriculum, and they will help um, hook you up to that because it's a great opportunity. Not only does it um, help you get that, but it also focuses on job skills, um, resume writing, um, interview skills, because a lot of times I know when I've gone to an interview, I shake in my boots every time. But it gives you some, some um, skills and a mindset that help you become successful in those areas. Um, it also introduces you to a lot of different careers, because there's so many out there that we aren't even aware of. And whether it leads you down into trade schools or further education, uh, please get your GED if you don't have it, because it's a it's the gateway to a lot of opportunity. Um, secondly, I just want to thank the people from WHRO. They've gone, uh, but where we have a great partnership with them. And lastly, um, I want to thank school and uh, the schools and school personnel, and especially who prepared for the uh, hurricane, and especially kudos to operations and all of those people in IT who were uh, preparing our schools for, uh, for a hurricane that luckily did not manifest itself in this area. But we're very, very fortunate to have such dedicated uh, people. And uh, thank you, Dr. Heron, for encouraging that in our school division. Um, I wanted to say that every time I come to a school board meeting, I learn something new. And tonight, I learned that we had bridge clubs in eight schools. That was something I had no idea about. Um, it is a skill that I myself would like to learn one of these days, and I, I'm kind of afraid to learn because I've heard it's so difficult and, and so complicated. And when I saw all of these students tonight having, uh, with their awards, I just have to say, I, that really made me happy for um, elevating beyond excellence. Uh, in the game format. I also wanted to share with you that Dr. Heron and I were fortunate enough, um, the win was it Wednesday? Uh, while she was in the midst of uh, school close closures and everything, we had the opportunity to have lunch and meet with uh, Dr. Catherine Rowe, the new president of William & Mary. And I'm just very uh, much looking forward to uh, whatever future um, uh, synergy that we can build on between William and Mary and WJCC. We already have so many, um, so many connections in this uh, 
town between William and Mary and our school system, and I just can see see it getting even more and more uh, elevated. I'm going to start using that brand. <laughs> so anyway, I just wanted to say it was delightful meeting her and hearing about some of her experiences um, with her previous school system. Or to come. Ms. Ombi? Yeah, thank you. Um, as I was driving my seventh grader to piano lessons tonight and my ninth grader to band practice tonight and waved goodbye to my senior, she went off to her volleyball game, it occurred to me that not only do our students have to get back in the swing of school, which the hurricane kind of made that difficult, it was start and stop and start and stop, but our families do as well. And so wanted to applaud our families for supporting their students academically, but also with their after school activities. Um, without families, our, our students can't do it. So thank you for getting back in the swing of um, school. I wanted to congratulate uh, Mr. Legowitz. Um, was it last week? Was it last week or two weeks ago? I had the two weeks ago I had the privilege of, of touring uh, or visiting him uh, with uh, several members, Dr. Heron and several members of her staff, uh, and Dr. Lane from the uh, Virginia Department of Education, and surprising him um, with his uh, Region Two Teacher of the Year uh, award. And so I'm I'm rooting for him and hoping that he performs well at the state level and. Um, and so looking forward to the results there. Uh, I also wanted to, I attended two events. One um, on last Saturday, uh, Dr. Heron gave a presentation to Neighborhood Council Williamsburg about our school division and did an excellent job. So thank you for doing that. And they so appreciated here learning about our division. And then yesterday, um, because uh, the Board of Supervisors were not able to go to the opening for, or the um, ribbon cutting for the auxiliary gym, gave a tour yesterday to, uh, to Mr. Porter and, and Dr. McGlennon. So I uh, appreciate everyone who was involved with that. And then I just want to echo um, everybody's thanks and appreciation regarding uh, Hurricane Florence and the staff's um, work there. You know, not only were you taking care of students and staff and, and, and measuring what our neighbors were doing um, against what, you know, what we needed to do, but you were also cooperating with the localities who had their own uh, you know, needs to be met for the citizens at large. So appreciate your being a really good community partner there uh, with regard to using schools as shelters. That's not an easy task. So appreciate your um, working with them and, and um, taking that into consideration as well. So uh, anything else? Okay. If not, then that brings us to upcoming events. We've got the policy committee on September 26th at 8 a.m. in the annex uh, at central office. We've got the school liaison committee on uh, September 27th at 7.30 a.m. in the annex uh, at central office. Um, and then we've got the special education advisory committee on October 11th at 6.30 p.m. in the James City County Rec Center. Okay, and that brings us to upcoming meetings. Our next um, meeting is October 2nd at 6 p.m. That's a closed session in the annex at the school board office, followed by work session and action items at 6.30. And then we have another closed, se uh, closed session on October 16th at 6 p.m. here in Building F, followed by a public hearing on the uh, CIP at 6.30, and then immediately following, following um, the public healing hearing, we'll have a regular meeting. Nothing else? Run the meeting.